Hello, my name is Lita Carbone and I'm the Instructional Support Specialist at the College of St. Rose. Today I'm going to go over the different features of hosting a webinar. Before we begin, there are some points that I want to mention. Webinars are an additional cost for your program. You can schedule a webinar 100 with OLS and we can assign you as a co-host so you can start the webinar without needing us to join directly. However, if you decide that you want your own webinar account, you will need to figure that into your budget. Additionally, webinars are paid on a yearly basis. There is no month to month option. Also, many of the features in webinars can also be found in a licensed account. They may have different names or look slightly different, but the functionality is the same. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. If you have your own webinar account, the schedule a webinar looks almost identical to the schedule a meeting option. If this is a large event, I highly recommend requiring registration, which that will be underneath the when section. So you can select required. After the meeting is created and people have registered, you can download a CSV of the attendees for your records. As with Zoom meetings, it is best practice to have a passcode. Zoom automatically creates a numeric passcode, but you can change it so it includes letters, which you'll notice that I've already done here. Okay, and just like with regular Zoom meetings, there's the video option where hosts and panelists can have their videos on or off. And you'll notice that the attendees are not listed on here but they are listed in the audio section. There's the option for telephone, computer, or both. With webinars, participants are anonymous and cannot be seen or heard by other participants. This option is for the users that are signing into the webinar and how they will hear the presentation during the webinar. And much like the regular meetings in Zoom, you can require authentication to join. Just as a refresher, this means that users must be signed into a Zoom account in order to join. If they are not logged in under their account, they cannot join the meeting. Additionally, you can approve or block entry for users from specific countries or regions, as well as automatically record the webinar once it begins. The Q&A option is automatically selected when you create your webinar, but you can deselect that if you would like. It is a lot like the chat feature where participants can ask questions. The panelists can help monitor the questions being asked. I'll show you that once we get into the webinar in Zoom. Underneath the Q&A option, there is the ability to enable a practice session. I highly recommend doing this so that way you can practice and troubleshoot any issues before you begin your webinar. There is an on-demand option as well. This means that on-demand webinars allow you to schedule a webinar with registration and record the webinar automatically in the cloud. After the webinar, registration will stay open and anyone who registers will receive a link to the cloud recording. The host will receive registration information for both live attendees and others who register to watch it later on. Okay. So then after your webinar has been created, let's go ahead and schedule this. After your webinar has been created, you can create polls and Q and A's in advance. This can only be done after the webinar is scheduled. So I'll click on this. You can also create a survey as well. And here's the poll. So it looks a lot like the polls that you can create in a licensed account. The Q&A options, this is to adjust your settings, which you can also adjust in the meeting itself. You can just deselect allow anonymous questions and allow attendees to view answered questions only or all questions. So let's just leave it as answered questions only and go ahead and hit save. Okay, then all my changes have been saved. 
All right, so let's actually get into what the webinar looks like. Okay, so here is what the webinar looks like. You'll notice that the buttons at the bottom are different slightly than the ones in a regular Zoom meeting. So underneath participants, you'll see that you have panelists, which will also list the host on there as well. And you'll see under attendees that we have one attendee. And you can allow them to talk. You can also promote attendees to be a panelist. So if you have people that are scheduled to help with your webinar, if they forget to register or you forget to assign them the panel's position in the webinar when you're scheduling, you can also promote them to panelists once they join the meeting. Okay, so close out of that. All right, and then we have Q&A here, which right now we don't have any questions being asked, but you'll see that there's the open questions. So these are questions that have not been answered yet, which there's a column for the answered questions that have been submitted by the attendees. And you also have dismissed. So if there are questions that aren't appropriate for the webinar, you can go ahead and dismiss those. If you click on this gear icon, it shows you that the attendees can only see the answered questions. So if there are questions that are open, they won't be able to see those. If they're dismissed, the attendees won't see those. They'll only see the ones that have been answered. But you can change it so that way it's all questions. But if there's the chance that there might be Zoom bombers, it's probably best to have it as answered questions only. And once again, there's the option to have polls in your webinar where you can add questions. And it looks a lot like when you create a poll in a regular meeting. Okay, let's go back to the Zoom meeting here. Okay, and they do have the chat feature, which you can only discuss with panelists or you can have panelists and attendees use the chat. But since the questions, since the Q&A option is available, I recommend that keeping the chat between the panelists and the hosts is the best option. Okay, so then let's look at the share screen. As you can see, it looks pretty similar to what you would normally see in a Zoom meeting. Underneath the advanced is where you have the option to do a PowerPoint as a virtual background. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like because I wanna bring up a good point about using this feature. So you'll see that my video is put back here or is put down here in the corner. If you have a slide with a lot of text I recommend that you don't use this feature because if you aren't positioned in exactly the right spot, then you'll be covering up some of the presentation. So just wanted to point that out and you can do the stop share and then it'll bring it back to the normal video screen. And much like the regular Zoom meetings, you can do a portion of your screen, share only the music and computer sound, video, the other options that you would normally come up with in a Zoom meeting, as well as any files that you would like to share from Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, so on and so forth. All right, and you'll see that there's the record button here. So if you do have it set up so it doesn't automatically record, then you can record once you start the webinar. All right, there's also the live transcript button. Um, you can assign it so a panelist or a participant can type up the transcript or the closed captioning. You can have it so that you will type it up after the meeting's over. You can also have a third party service do it for you, or you can just enable the auto transcription. Now, one of the things with Zoom is the 
the captions aren't necessarily accurate 100% of the time. So if you have a lecture or, for example, this webinar that you want to have the transcript available after it's over, I recommend that you upload it to Nomia because the, trans, the transcript option for Nomia is much more accurate than Zoom. I've found that the Zoom transcripts can be very broken <laughs> um, and just incredibly inaccurate. So those are some options that you can do for the live transcript. And on the more option here, these are live stream options. So if you were to live stream it to Facebook or to YouTube, there's a way that you can do that as well. Um, I would not recommend doing that if this is going to be a private webinar um, or if it is going to be showcased just to colleagues or so on and so forth. Okay, so. Those are all of the different features that you can use in your Zoom webinar. Once again, the, you can always use regular Zoom meetings, but if you do come across the opportunity to use a webinar, these are different things that you can do to make your webinar super effective.